Good afternoon. Welcome to our website. My name is Dr. Moore Pardo. I am a second year infectious disease fellow at USF in Tampa, Florida. Today, I will be presenting interesting tropical medicine cases. These were real patients that I saw during an off-site international rotation in Colombia earlier this year in May. We hope you enjoy them. First, let's talk about the rotation itself. It all started in Medellin, Colombia, which is a beautiful city often referred to as the city of the eternal spring because of its cool climate all year round. On the left is the view from my hotel room and on the right top we have a breathtaking sunset. In the bottom right picture we have a glimpse of the infrastructure, housing and crowding we can expect in this city. Also worth mentioning this rotation is made possible via an affiliation with this private university in Colombia, shown here. So let's get started with the cases. Case number one. This is the case of a 50-year-old female with no pertinent past medical history and no known systemic illnesses who presented to the Colombian Institute of Tropical Medicine. She complained of fever, chills, sweats, mild headache, myalgia, particularly back pain, nausea, and vomit since two to three days prior to presentation. She also reported sick contacts at her place of work with similar symptoms. Of note, she worked at a gold mine in a rural area of Colombia called El Choco. She also endorsed mosquito bites. However, she denied any other significant animal exposure. So what would be the next step in diagnosis? At the Colombian Institute of Tropical Medicine, we immediately did a thick and thin smear of the patient's blood. Then we viewed it under the microscope in the parasitology area of the lab. Can anyone guess what we saw? In the bottom right corner, we saw a structure. Does anybody know what that structure is? This is a trophozoite. So on the top left, we have a schisant, and on the bottom right, there's another structure next to another schisant called an early ring form. Here we zoom it in so that you could fully appreciate it. What's your diagnosis now with all this information? Is it A, malaria, B, leishmaniasis, C, strongyloidiasis? D, filariasis, or E, Chagas disease? Any guesses? Yes, correct. The diagnosis is malaria. In these maps, we feature areas where endemic countries are in red, and these are known for malaria transmission. As you can see, Colombia is one of these countries, and it also includes the area of El Choco, which we were talking about earlier. That's where our patient most likely became exposed. So based on the appearance of the structure and the red blood cell morphology of the ring trophozoite, what plasmodian species would you expect? Would it be A, falciparum, B, vivax, C, malaria, D, ovale, or E, Nolesi. Yes, we know that the Plasmodian species is Vivax because it contains Schaffner dots. Here is an image that we obtained from up to date, which features the red blood cell morphology in various forms of plasmodium infections. This is a good chart to have for future reference. So how should she be treated? Should this patient receive A, arthromethyl lumefantrin, B, doxycycline, C, chloroquine plus primaquine, D, mefloquine, or E, atovaquone plus perwinol? What would you do? So 
she received C, chloroquine and primaquine for 14 days. How come? Since Columbia is not an area of chloroquine resistance, this patient can receive the chloroquine. And the primaquine is added to this regimen because it is an excellent gameticide. And it was not all work. There was some fun and play too. This is one of my favorite spots in Colombia, Guatapé. Guatapé is a beautiful, charming, picturesque town an hour and a half away from Medellin. And in order to see this visiting amazing view, visitors, including myself, must climb 659 stairs up this mountain, which is quite the exercise, but certainly worth it. Now on to case number two. This is the case of a 37-year-old healthy female who went on a hiking trip in Meta, Colombia. She recalls insect and bug bites while outdoors, but later these healed and she does not remember any symptoms whatsoever. Subsequently, the patient donated blood, which was screened for the usual HIV and hepatitis C, as well as this endemic parasite. She initially presented to the Colombian Institute of Tropical Medicine after receiving a letter in the mail disclosing a positive result. She was treated with nifertimox following this diagnosis. So what is your diagnosis? Is it A, malaria, B, leishmaniasis, C, strongyloidiasis, D, filariasis, or E, Chagas disease? This is how the parasite looked under the microscope. Any ideas? Yes, that's exactly it. It's Chagas disease. This parasite is also known as Trypanosoma cruciae. So I added this image as a fun fact. This is a screenshot that I took of the CDC website. And it says that blood products donated in an endemic region for Chagas disease, such as Colombia, will be automatically screened for this parasite. Good to know. Food for thought. After I spent one week of my rotation in Medellin, Colombia, I went to this area called Apaltado, which is also in Colombia. This is a rural region where life was a bit different when compared to Medellin. The climate was not as cool. In fact, it was rather hot and humid. And everybody there was very kind and warm, and it was a great place to be. There are two branches of the Colombian Institute of Tropical Medicine, one in Medellin, which we saw the cases already discussed, and the other one was in Apaltado. And that's where I spent the next two weeks of my rotation. Please stay tuned for the continuation of this presentation, part two, which has more interesting tropical medicine cases. Thank you for your attention and your time. Hope you enjoy these cases.